Hey there everyone, how is it going? So in this video, I'm going to be um, speeding up a Webpack build by two times. So if you're interested in that, um, stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so as I promised, I'm going to be speeding up a webpack build over here. Um, so this is a React webpack build, and I'm going to be working off a previous webpack build. So if you don't know how to create your own like normal webpack build with React, um, I do highly recommend you watch my previous video. I have a video um, setting up the basics when it comes to React and even just uh, uh, um, testing. Um, but in this video, we're just going to be mainly focusing on taking our React app from Webpack and then speeding that part and that up. Okay, so let's start. Um, so over here on the right, if you have, if you've seen my last video, this is all the basics that you need, right? You got your styling over here. You got your Babel loader over here. You have your assets. Um, you have your uh, type strip checking. And uh, yeah, that's about it. You have your hot module reloading. And that's pretty much it to really get started with the web with webpack um, you also have your Babel RC which actually does a few react um, transpiling so this is like really all you need so we're gonna take this and we're gonna um, speed it up so before we speed it up let's actually um, measure it right so um, there's this neat little plugin called speed measure webpack plugin so if you go here and you say yarn you say yarn at dash dash dev and then you um, download that you get um, speed measure webpack a, a plugin. So if you type that in and get the speed measure webpack plugin, you initialize it, and then you wrap your um, your webpack configuration inside this. So if you do SMP wrap, um, and that should give you your that should pretty much analyze your entire build. Um, so it's really cool. So let's take a look at it and see how it looks. So if we, I have this helpful little um, one over here. So if I say yarn build measure, so yarn build, actually yarn build will work as, as, as well. Um, but I prefer the measure one because my yarn build actually makes a JSON file and that won't work for this scenario. So we have a yarn build measure over here. Let's expand this up. Um, and see what we have going on. So you see it takes like a little bit of time um, to get up and running. Um, takes a, a, a solid couple of seconds. And this app is not big. Let me remind you, like this is my own small application and it's really not that big. Once you get into like production level app applications, these things can, can get fairly large. So let's see what we got. We got about 28 seconds. And over here it says, so general output time took um, 28 seconds. So now um, just remember that. So I'm just gonna keep this over here and I'm gonna keep that off to a side. Okay, so now let's start um, optimizing this, right? So we're gonna use a couple things. We're gonna use SWC and we're, we're gonna use ES build. The reason why we're not using one or the other is because they actually both complement each other really well. Whereas SWC actually allows transpiling to ES5 and ES build has a more featureful um, minification. And actually, when I say these features, one doesn't have the other. So ES build doesn't have support for ES5, and SWC doesn't have support for proper minification just yet. Um, it is coming out soon, depending on when you watch this video. Um, so let's download all that. So yarn add dash dash dev. Um, we are going to need are um, at swc forward slash core. We will need swc dash loader, um, loader. And what else we need are um, es build, I guess, yeah. And the last one we need is es build loader. And it's actually pretty insane that this is all we really need. Um, we actually have to take out more stuff that we won't use. <laughs> then we are adding stuff. So that would, that, so that's pretty a pretty neat feature. Okay, so let's get started, right? Um, so what's gonna happen is that we are going to let 
SWC handle the transpiling. So if, if, if SWC is handling it, we do not need Babel loader over, over here. So instead, uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna substitute out um, a loader over here, our Babel loader to SWC loader. And it's going to also take an options key, an options key over here. I'll just actually make this an empty object for now. And then we will um, fix that up later. Um, so now let, let's create our configuration file. So what I'd like to do is um, touch um, SWC config uh, .js over here. Um, you might see um, in other places it's specified differently, but um, I like doing it this way. So let's first, um, so as I said, so minification isn't complete, but they still provide it. And because they still provide it, it's still a little bit faster if you if, if, if SWC does as much minifying as it can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna speci um, specify minify, and we're gonna say that's true. Um, what else we are going to do? Um, uh, this is some really bad auto import over here. Okay, so minify is true. Um, what else do we have? Also, this is JS. I realize this actually has to be JSON over here. Okay, so cool. Minify is true. And then JSC, so JavaScript config. Um, it, and then it's going to take a parser. And then parser has a bunch of configs over here. So we have a syntax for, and the syntax I like to use is TypeScript. Um, and then TSX is also true because we are using um, Java JSX with TypeScript. Um, decorators is actually false. And that actually might be false by default, but I'm not sure. Um, and dynamic, dynamic imports is true. Okay, so that's it for the JavaScript um, config. The next one we have is our minify config. And this is going to take in a compress, which is true. And we are going to take a source map Let's keep this false for now. Uh, we can change this later and then mangle will be true. Okay, so we have that. The last thing we need um, is actually something that's provided in the newer re React um, where you don't have to specify um, import React in every file. And this actually makes it happen or this actually allows it when you use SWC as, as well. So let's do React and then do runtime is automatic. Okay, so that is it for our config. We have our minify, our GSC, our parser, syntax, TypeScript, um, and that's all we need truly. So now let's go over here and let's import that. So cons SWC, R, let's just say SWC RC, and then I'm just gonna require it over here. And the reason why I separate it in a different file is because it's just more maintainable. So, I mean, you can inline it if you want um, right over here in the options, but preferably I do not like to do that. Um, I have to separate my code. All right, so we have our SWC, which handles our, which takes place of Babel. So now we just have to handle um, minification too. Um, by default, what happens is that Tesser takes control of minification. And so now Tesser is, you know, built on JavaScript as, as well. So um, let's swap that out for something actually faster. So const, and then we're gonna require our ES build loader. And over inside, we're gonna destructure ES build minify plugin. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, and there is a key called optim, it's called um, minimizer. So min minimizer. And it's an array of plugins. So it's just going to be a new ES build plugin. And that is pretty much about it. So what happens is when you do Webpack build on production mode, it actually um, does minification for you. And when it's not on a production mode, then it doesn't do minification for you. Um, one thing is I need to specify um, the target. So even though this is, I'm writing ES 
2015 and I promised that um, we're building to ES5. The way minification works in um, ES build is that if it notices um, lower um, a lower target, it won't um, transpile that up. It'll just leave it the way it is. So when it sees ES5, it doesn't touch it. So what happens is SWC generates ES5 and then ES build goes through and minifies it and doesn't touch or change it. So it works perfectly fine. So we have that. So now let's save that. Um, one thing is that we also need to allow minification on CSS. So, um, so one thing extra we have to add is over here in the CSS loader, we have to add an object and this object is going to be a loader and the loader is going to be ES build loader and then the options is going to be loader um, CSS and then minify is true. Okay, so let's save that. And now we have our ES build loader over here. Cool. So now we have everything we need. We actually changed so little, which is actually pretty amazing um, to achieve so much. Uh, so um, unknown fields. So I have a really bad um, SWC config over here. So decorators, duh, let me um, get that decorators and then um, dynamic imports over here. Okay, cool. So this looks good. So let's run it at once more. So let's do a clear and then a yarn build measure. And then again, we go through the same process where um, SWC goes through the code and transpiles it to ES5 and then passes it off to ES build and then ES build um, compresses it which is um, a pretty, they, they work actually pretty well together. Okay, so that's good. So that is done over here. And we have a build of about 16 seconds. So let's see what we had before. So we had about 28 seconds before. So 28 seconds and now it's 16 seconds. So it's almost two times faster than the original build. And to be honest, right now, um, off camera, this works much faster is mainly because um, my screen recording and all that stuff's going on. So it actually, actually, when the camera's off, this actually goes down even more to eight seconds. So you can see how we got from 28 seconds to 16 seconds by just changing a couple configs. And this is a pretty much a whole build of like Webpack, which is pretty neat. Uh, that is pretty much it. That's how you speed up your Webpack build. So um, let me know in the comments section if you tried this out. I'm really interested what everyone's performance gains were um, with this with this setup. Um, and and I'm gonna drop the the code in the um, description so you can try it out yourself. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a, a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Okay, bonus content. So if you don't really give a shit, sorry, you know, I use the S word. Um, if you don't really care about like configs and stuff, I totally understand configs are straight doo doo. You should probably use um, Create React App, Vite. Um, actually, those are the only two that I know. Create React App and Vite that are the only two. Vite's more extensive because it does extend to um, Svelte View. Um, also, Preact, a bunch of other different f frameworks as well. Minus Angular <laughs> for good reason. Um, I don't think it supports Angular, but anyways, but if you don't really care, but you do want an SWC app, um, what you can do right here is say, just like there is a Create React app, there's also a Create SWC app, and you can specify the template. Now the template can be React, yes. By default, if you don't specify this, it does give you a React TypeScript project. So now let's see what happens when we hit enter. It does all the, it fetches um, Create, SWC app and then it runs a um, script and then after that we should get a folder. So let's see over here and fix installed copying uh, a directory and it says project um, done projects set up please install packages and run. Okay so over here we have in my app so let's cd into my app over here let's do a yarn install you can do an npm install as well as your choice. 
Um, so let's just install over here. And what this app actually is, it is a Bootstrap SWC app. It comes with testing. So with just specifically, if you select TypeScript, you get just TypeScript support and you get React a, a TypeScript out of the box. Um, so now we have this app. So now if you say yarn start over here, we actually do get a development server. Um, it does the bundling and everything. And then we can open this app over here. Um, so this is the app that you get. So this is a this is a React app in TypeScript that you get straight out of the box and it comes with SWC. So what that's great about is that it's scalable as you take your project, as your project gets bigger and bigger, compilation time should not be a problem with you. Compilation and testing time should not be a problem with you. Um, and also if you don't want to do React TypeScript, there's actually a different command. So if you do npx create SWC app and you say dash dash template equals React, um, you do get a React project just without TypeScript, the exact same thing without a TypeScript. I just wanted to plug that in over there for anyone that doesn't really care and just wants an app, um, definitely use this. It's it's pretty good and um, maintenance on this will continue. So um, that's actually the end end of this video. If you did like it, drop a subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.